All right. Well, hey, everyone. It's Rebecca Root. Thanks for tuning in again today for another episode. Um, today, I have Dapper Luke with me. How are you, Luke? Outstanding. How are you? Doing well. You that was my <laughs> alarm to remind me to get on this call oh, okay. because if I don't do alarm. Oh, got you. You got to do it five minutes early. You got to do it five minutes early. I should. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I don't do alarms, it's like I'm lost. But um, yeah, you're probably right. I actually had that thought to start doing it five minutes early. Um, and then, you know, yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, so as everybody knows, I like to jump right in. So um, Luke, tell us where you are and what you do in the industry. Hello, I am the Dapper Luke. I'm located in Virginia Beach and I am a custom clothier and a men and women suit designer. So if you're not familiar with a cloth ear, uh, we uh, specialize in different cloths or fabrics for custom suits, for both men and women. And then I also do a collection. I just released my spring summer 2021 collection. I'm looking forward to taking that to Rwanda and a couple other countries here in the near future. Awesome. So yeah, you already answered my question because I was going to say, tell mm -hmm. the people what that means because I was like, I feel like not everyone may know what that means. So thank you for going ahead and answering that question for yes, us. Yes, the custom <laughs> clothier. And some folks have never even saying it or even pronouncing it. So yes, it's a clothing expert. I don't know if I'm an expert. I think I'm more of a novice than an expert. Um, but yes, I definitely love clothing, fabrics. And uh, that's kind of what I do. I kind of get you in the best fabrics and clothing to make you look professional if I can. So talk to us a little bit about that, actually. So when you're talking about you get people into the best fabrics and clothing and stuff, what are you looking for? Like, how are you matching people with the best fabric for, for themselves? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily matching the person. It's more of like season. So people come to me, it's like, hey, you know, of course, each season has its kind of tones when you know the winter and the fall months are your darker tones like your I would say your earth tones browns tans greens and then your summer months it's your lighter colors your blues your light blues yellows pink things of that nature now when you're talking fabrics so as a claw there we're familiar with like cottons wool linens uh, wool blends so if a client comes to me it's like hey I just want this for the springtime I may get them a cotton or a linen suit they're like, hey, I want to get a suit. I'm not a really big suit guy. I just want to have one suit I can wear like all year round. So I may get them a wool blend. So it's not a very thick suit. It's in between. So it can be worn in the warmer months and also the colder months uh, if you layer it properly. Or like, you know, this is my just winter suit. So I may get them just a wool or a tweed. So you just kind of understand what the client needs and also what fabrics are available that can kind of meet that need. So that's kind of what we fall in. Right. Right. And then like kind of matching, of course, you know, I, I know that I, like as in styling, all of that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of that is relevant. And then on top of that, like the client themselves, like the client, you know, their day to day and all that stuff, like some clients at well, you know, I'm going to just throw an example there. Like, you know, some clients, if you're talking about like using silk, for example, and they're like, well, I work here or there, whatever. I'm chasing kids and like, I would love to have a silk suit, but that just doesn't make sense for me. So even like things like that, like really, yeah. <laughs> you know, like making sure. Yeah, I, I don't recommend a silk suit. Right. But yes, definitely. Um, my primary clientele, as far as my custom line goes, real estate agents, lawyers, uh, weddings, like grooms, both men and women. I do both women's tuxedos, men's tuxedos for weddings, proms is my big client base right now. There's a few proms going on, not really in the Hampton Road there. There are a few, but they're mainly put on by kind of private industries or like the parent group. They're not really doing it in the schools yet. But yes, definitely, you know, like you said, pretty much you give me the scenario, you know, what the suit is for and we'll kind of decide the fabric, the style and things of that nature, get you in the best suit. And then for me, it's a three-part process. The first process is we come in, we sit down, get your measurements and decide on the fabrics and the actual suit. The second part, you come in, do what I call your initial fitting. You actually try it on, it fit the way you like. If not, you know, we do some minor alterations and it's called final delivery where you come in, you actually pick up the suit. So the whole process for me is about four to five weeks. And then hopefully you'll walk away with a nice custom suit. 
Very nice. Very nice. Um, so how did this come about? How did, you know, you become Dapper Luke and Dapper Luke Collection? Is this something you always wanted to do? So it's, it's, it's a process. So for me, it dates back to 2012. 2012, I was with the United States Marine Corps in Afghanistan. And I read this book by Robert Green. I always talk about it. It's called Mastery. Inside the book Mastery, he talks about if money was not an option, what would you be doing? So for me, it's always been kind of fashion, styling things. I love fashion. So then he says, all right, well, do what you love and find a way to monetize. So initially when I came in and I created the Dapper Loop, the Dapper Loop was a blogger. I came in as a blogger. I would travel around the fashion shows, New York, Miami, LA, fashion weeks. And then I would kind of blog about my experience. So the Dapper Loop was a blogger. And then from the blogging, I became a model myself. Uh, and then I actually went on to style for Clavin Leonard out of New York. For about two years, I styled for Clavin Leonard. We went to Afghanistan, no, not Afghanistan. We went to Ghana, excuse me, South Africa, a few different areas in New York. And from there, he kind of was like, hey, you know, I really, really like this. You ever thought about, you know, getting in and doing your own brand? So that was kind of the birth of the Dapper Loop collection. So Dapper Loop collection, you know, kind of birthed in 2019. I put together my first collection in 2020 and debuted it in Algeria in the March of 2020. Like all of my phones are going off at the same time. I'm sorry, this is like crazy. <laughs> like everybody wants to call me right now. Um, but I guess I'm a busy guy. But overall, yeah, so then 2020 Dapper Loop collection launched. Of course, right after I launched my debut collection then we went into a pandemic and that's where the kind of the custom clavier came into it. So it was kind of a way to keep the lights on and pay the bills uh, when I'm not actually designing and putting on a collection. Awesome. So Dapper, that part, you know, of course, mm -hmm. there was no Dapper Dan. So how did you take on the Dapper part? So a lot of people think I got my name from Dapper Dan. To be quite honest, I didn't know who Dapper Dan was when I first came up with the name Dapper Luke. Uh, I actually kind of coined my name from another gentleman by the name of Dapper Lou. Right? So Dapper Lou is an influencer and my first name is Luke Men. So I just kind of shortened it to Luke, Dapper Luke. And that's kind of where that name came from. And then I just love, you know, the Dapper lifestyle, suits, bow ties, ties, vests, things of that nature. That's kind of what I like. So it kind of fits the Dapper persona. So then the Dapper Luke collection is just my thoughts, my inspiration when it comes to that realm of suiting. We may get into dresses and other things in the future. I'm not quite sure, but right now we're kind of sticking to suits. That's our niche. So as they say, find your niche and kind of stick to it. That's what we're doing right now. I was definitely muted and trying to talk to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, um, no, I was saying like, no, I definitely got the, the dapper part and you know where it was going. Um, I'll be honest with you, I just recently really found out Dapper Dan's history and all of that and you know his mm -hmm. I've read his book so it was a really right. good book I didn't yeah <laughs> so I just recently did some more in-depth research on him and stuff like that so um you know uh but yeah so I I, I got the Dapper part and then I, I think that's cool you know I think one of the things that happens when I talk to people even is that what you said that you read in your book, in the book that you read, sorry, not your book, but in the book that you read about, you know, yeah, finding your passion. And I always get the kickback from that from people of, well, my passion doesn't pay the bills or, you know, my passion. Why not? Passion, <laughs> Why right? not? I was going to say, what's your answer to that? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, so, I mean, it's up to you. Like, so you're absolutely right. We need money to function, you right. know, but with any true passion, there's ways to monetize it, right? Now, for me, it's fashion. So creating a collection and then going on and selling clothing items, right? But I could also write a book on fashion. I could have a blog on fashion that you have to subscribe to. I could have a YouTube channel on fashion. Um, one of the things that I'm doing is hopefully getting a television show here really soon and uploading it to a streaming network. So, you know, to say, how do I make money you know, that's, I, I guess that's for me, I'm from Baltimore, it's a hustler spirit in me, you know, I'm gonna find a way to make money in anything I do. You know, like I said, my, my company was started one month before an international pandemic, and I've done nothing but grow. 
So to say, or even ask the question, how do I monetize my passion? Are you truly passionate about your passion? Uh, Cause if you are, you'll find a way to monetize. That's all you think about. So for me, Yes, I would love to districtly be designing and just creating these amazing collections, but I got to keep the lights on. So that's why I became a custom claw beer. So I'm working in my element. I'm making a living, but I'm also able to do what I love, which is create new collections and then travel to international fashion weeks as well. Speaking of keeping the lights on, it's about to storm. <laughs> oh, I just saw my lights flicker. So I was like, oop. Um, but no, yeah, I think so. It's a mindset thing, right? Which is in life in general. Um, but let's see. Mm-hmm. Let's absolutely, see. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I, I will simply say, like, I, I'm, I'm kind of overly confident speaking on this set. But don't get me wrong. I've gone through every emotion uh, in my time as the <laughs> Dapper Luke. You know, sadness, happiness, anxiety. You know, should I go on and do something else? Absolutely. I have those days. But you know, to me, the good days definitely outweigh the bad days. And I've just kind of stayed true to what it is that I love and people are seeing it. And then another thing that I will say, right, is whenever you're quote unquote building or creating a brand, right, you have to understand it's a process. It takes time. It does not happen overnight. For every overnight celebrity, they say it takes 10 years, right, right. Like work and, and, and kind of getting in that industry. And then for me, I don't really want to blow up too fast because one thing I say is if you blow up too fast and you're not thoroughly knowledgeable about the industry that you want to represent, you're going to get exposed. So you want to make sure that when it's time for you to get that light, you're ready for it because the light is fleeting, right? The light looks for who's most interesting, right? So it may get on you for a second, maybe a minute, but if you have nothing to say, nothing to present, nothing unique to show, it's going to move on to the next person. So definitely you just have to take your time, be very well, very well versed in your industry or your passion, whatever it is, and then take your time. Your time will come if that's truly what you need to be. Right. No, I love that. I love that. Like we, I think, you know, we've talked about our mentorship program and things like that, but um, we talk about that, you know, ways to, ways to have longevity in this industry this is for Mm -hmm. businesses in general again a lot of the things we're talking about is business in general but if we're saying Mm -hmm. specific to the industry it's like because you know if you start out as a model i started out as a model yes you may have i don't know 15 20 years if you're a naomi campbell type maybe longer (laughs) but i mean at a certain point maybe you want to stop modeling or maybe Mm -hmm. you know you're not getting the calls you used to so kind of like just continue to evolve. And I I tell people all the time, like I've already been in this industry for 11 years. And yeah, like I I can honest, thank you. I can honestly say I probably didn't start seeing the quote unquote fruits of my labor, I guess you can say until probably year five or six. And, you know, so it's like now people are like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, but I've been in here <laughs> I've been doing this but yeah, you know yeah, it's behind yeah. the scenes so yeah you're gonna go through and, and all yeah the emotions, all the things <laughs> absolutely and then on top of that like money should not be your factor if it's truly your passion you would do it because money is not an option that's what you define the passion as you're passionate about it you would do it yes we all want to make money we all want right. to you know be able to live but you're truly passionate money is not the object Right. I see people all the time. Right. You know, if you know, in passing, they may I'd be like, hey, I'd like for you to model. Or are you paying? Well, the question is, like, are you a model that deserves being paid? Like, what is your experience? Like, right. uh, is me hiring you more beneficial to you? Or is it more beneficial to me? Right. So, you know, again, yes, I'm never going to knock anybody that's getting that paper. But Ultimately, what is your goal? Is your goal to be around, like you said, for years within the industry, be seen as a subject matter expert, or is it just to get a couple of dollars to get you from week to week? Right. That's what you've got to think about. So what right. is your goal? Right. And then the- There's always going to be money coming and money going to be going. So right. you could be in it real hot one year and make $100,000. Next right. year, you make no money. But if you're truly passionate, you, know, you, you weren't in it for the money anyway. You're just still you know, building other people up, maybe inspiring other people. You may be training. It's just, to me, it's not always been about the money. The money's going to, 
I've made and spent a lot of money. <laughs> so, I mean, that's definitely not what is driving me to stay in this industry. Right. I think that could be a whole show. Those of us who've been around for a little while about how we made and spent money, made and lost it. Like, so yeah. I think that could be a whole yeah, show. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about Africa. You know, I'm African. So everybody knows once people start mm -hmm. talking about Africa, my ears perk up. Um, so how did that happen? Yes, yes. How did you get connected to the African fashion scene? Which, by the way, <laughs> people like you, y'all, people need to understand that the African fashion scene is all of that. And so if you haven't checked it out, you really yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, it's amazing. absolutely. So, yeah. Um, the models over there are amazing. The shows are amazing. The people are amazing. You have some amazing. Uh, fans of fashion over there and also consumers. So for me, again, you know, this is where I definitely got to plug my, my mentor, Clavin Leonard. I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined my debut collection being in Algeria, but he said, why not? You know, so he introduced me to that. Um, I first styled for him in Ghana, then South Africa, and then Ghana twice. And then uh, when it was time for me to debut my collection, he said, why not in Algeria? So I debuted my collection in Algeria. Since then, I've, you know, showcased my collection in Tanzania or Tanzania, like they say there, right. and Ghana. Uh, and then hopefully I'm going to be going to Rwanda here uh, the end of this month, June, going into July. So ultimately, I just love the market. It's our market. It's where, you know, we're from. And I think it's a growing market. So why not get in there when you can be, you know, kind of ride the wave up? Or, you know, some of the other fashion weeks, they're kind of established, they kind of know what they like, and I may not be what they like. And who am I to try to change what they like? Let me go somewhere where I'm accepted, where they like what I have, and then work in that industry. It's not always has to be a, you know, a climb up that's treacherous. You know, I want to take the elevator. I got to climb up a ladder where people are throwing rocks down on me. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Um, I love where I'm at. I love the environment over there. And I, anytime I go back, it's always love. Yeah, you know, I mean, the people who know me know I can talk about Africa for hours, so I won't, I won't do all that. But um, I think it's great. I, and, um, you know, through my personal business, and then of course, Worthy, I really, really try to bring Africa, you know, together and into whatever it is I'm doing. Um, of course, the biggest fashion week that people know in Africa is probably Nigeria Fashion Week, but um, Ghana does a pretty, pretty amazing fashion week. Ghana's, uh, not to mention, Absolutely. like, think about, I mean, my family lives in Ghana for three and a half years, so I'm pretty familiar with Ghana, and um, their, uh, their second lady, the vice president's wife, she's super, she's actually gotten some fashion awards internationally, I think, and um she's like on like best dress list for Africa a lot and stuff like that. And the really in cool thing with her is that I think they are Muslim. So she has, you know, like restrictions on what she can wear, but it's like, she does it in such a, you know, she follows all her religious restrictions, but, and she does it so beautifully. So she's on like best dress list a lot actually. So she represents Ghana really, really well. Um, as far as fashion is concerned. And then, of course, I always tell people, you know, first trip to Africa, Ghana is usually the country I recommend for people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because, you know, English speaking, they're pretty chill. Ghana doesn't really have too much conflict going on and no, stuff no. like that. So, yeah, like definitely that's exciting to me that you're um, yeah. on the African fashion scene there. <laughs> that's really exciting to me. Absolutely. Rwanda. So is it, um, is there a fashion week going on in Rwanda or is it just fashion yes, show? Yes, Mercedes Benz Fashion Week Kigali will be going on Kigali. from the 2nd to the 3rd of July. So I'll be there planning to fly out on the 30th, arrive on the 1st, and then kind of pick the models. They usually have models available for you. Oh, nice. Do our fitting and then display the show on the 2nd, 3rd. Maybe get a day of, you know, sightseeing, kind of see what's going on. You don't want to just go there and just be work, work, work. Right. And then uh, head back this way uh, on the 6th of July. Nice. Yeah, um, my family lived in Rwanda for about a year. I okay. was not with them, so I have never been to Rwanda, but they lived there okay. for about a year. So 
always good things. They loved living in Rwanda. They really, is this your first time to Rwanda or have you been there before? This is my first time. Yes, absolutely. Yep, yep, my first time. Awesome, awesome. So um, with Africa and, you know, your shows, you've mentioned that, do they all um, have models ready for you already? Yes, yes. Um, So normally we do two things a lot of times when we're over there. We'll typically link up with some models, some photographers and kind of do photo shoots. Because in addition to the actual show, you want to get your brand out there as much as possible. So you work with some local models, work with some local photographers, try to get some television or radio interviews while you're there, you know, kind of talk to the press or bloggers. And then, yes, the actual fashion week will provide you with models. So you kind of uh, what they call industry standard sizing. You try to keep your clothing within industry standards. And then they have the model usually will fit within that standard as well provided. And you kind of pick what you want um, and do your fitting. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So as far as the flow, fashion show flows, I've, um, you know, fashion shows are hectic, but, you know, I've produced Mm -hmm. and, you know, directed all the, all the things with fashion shows over my tenure, but as far as the flow and it, like the behind the scenes and all that, where would you say it flows easier? Like, I feel like I personally, just because from from an Africa standpoint, I feel like, and people are probably gonna be mad, but Africa, not all the countries, but like a lot of the countries, Africa is more chill in the sense of like, they don't mm. get like stressed out like we do over here. <laughs> starting on time is not, it's not a big deal for them. Yeah, and starting on time. Com- accomplishing the show is important. But I will tell you, absolutely, when I went to Tanzania, I did Swahili Fashion Week, that was one of the probably best produced shows that I've ever been to. That was produced and run by some South Africans. But overall, when I arrived, and I actually arrived late, I arrived a day later than I wanted to, uh, they took my clothing, steamed it for me, got all the models ready and when the models ready they were the ones that dressed the models so like they literally all I had to do was just walk down and then wave at the crowd at the very <laughs> end like they took everything else so uh it was really well done but yes like Ghana Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week don't talk bad about me you know Mr. Raji but yes uh the show was supposed to start at 6 p.m. they may be still building the runway at 6 p.m. but they're going to get the show done that day it just ain't going to start right on time so yeah like I think that's what I was getting to it's like okay so it's like there's a there's a caveat there's a catch-22 there like right so you gotta you gotta be chill like no worries man like it's gonna get done so if you're stressing about time and stuff you you may as well throw that out the window just throw the flow if if you are coming to watch the show don't show up on time right you know but right. if you're in the show you have no choice you've got to be there right but so, yeah yeah it's, so it's, it's like, one of those and i'm this is the military in me to hurry up and wait so that's kind of definitely the mentality you have to have yeah yeah so it's like i have to like shift my mindset like because i'm like listen they're they're, they're gonna start late however when it does start they're on it that's the thing like when it does mm-hmm. start they're on it so i'm like all right, man. Like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I got to flow. I got to flow. I'm in Africa. I'm mm-hmm. just, I've got to flow. So it's just interesting, you know, like the cultural differences. And I think that's one of the important things um, when you're going to any international um, market, I would say is to, you know, just be mindful. Yeah. Like, you know, be mindful of the yeah, culture. Just, just embrace it. Yeah. It's not always the same. Yeah. yeah, expectation. And for the most part, like you said, just kind of take it all in. Right, right. Absolutely. Like, you know, just, 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 just flow with it. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, no, that's really cool. Well, um, I want to say, you know, like, it's, like, it's awesome. I love hearing everything that you're doing here in the States. Um, but of course, also like, um, internationally. Um, did you have your when did you start the women's suits or has that been along the this whole it's always been it's always always been been. yeah I've always done women's both men and women my women's suits are definitely beginning to evolve I'm taking a lot more risk and trying to make it more of a so when I first started I kind of wanted to say okay let's kind of take your classic suit and kind of mix it up with your colors right but then that gets you know it's only so many colors in the rainbow right I guess it's a lot of colors but then you want to kind of begin to 
test how can we change up the actual aesthetics of the suit to make it you know more feminine and then also make it you know still you know a suit uh so that's kind of what i've been working on just kind of ways to change it up you know make it more you know unique but also you know utilize very nice colors and kind of have a theme my most recent theme is called coastal sunrise and i try to use the colors that you see whenever you're on a coast and you see a sunrise you know here in virginia beach you know the last year i've seen a lot of sunsets and sunrises you know so you know, that was kind of one of the things that gave me inspiration for this most recent collection. Yes, I love that collection. Um, I got to see pictures and video and everything. So um, that was a really cool collection. And I was like, you know, I've never Thank had you. a custom suit made. So I was like, ooh, no. you know, maybe it's, it's time. Maybe your time. It's maybe right. Your time. I'm like, yes, it's, it, exactly. must, it's, it must be time because I've never had one made. So um, I think that's, that's really great. So before we go, what can we look for um, from the Dapper Loot collection? You know, I maybe for the, your next collection for next year. Do you have any ideas or thoughts uh, on that? Uh, uh, I haven't even thought about my next collection. I'm, I'm still focused on this one. I'm still trying to get this one out. But what I will simply say is uh, definitely a lot more as far as exposure. Uh, we're hopefully going to be doing a Dapper Luke uh, streaming show. Uh, we're doing 10 episodes of Suit Up with Dapper Luke. It's going to be dropping in the fall. We want to do at least three to four fashion weeks before the year is out. And then, like you said, begin working on the next collection. But even if we're not working on that, you always have the ability to come and see me and get a custom suit. So, uh, when are you making your appointment? <laughs> I mean, I have your information. So. Not to put you on the spot. Not to put you on the spot. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, you want me to like, we can, we. <laughs> and I'm we'll like, do that later. We'll do it later. Yeah, yeah. But no, I was, I was like, I, cause I was actually watching the, the, the highlight video from your, um, you know, for your most recent collection. And I was like, I've never had a custom suit. Like, it just may be time. And then I'm like, and what would I wear it to? And then I was like, I don't know why I'm tripping. Like, you know, there's plenty of places for me to wear it to. Yeah, I'm sure you'll find a place. Absolutely. Oh, there are. Absolutely. There's There are plenty of places. I don't know why I was even thinking like that, because there's plenty of places <laughs> to wear mm -hmm. it to. So, um, yeah. But I just want to thank you so much, Luke, Dapper Luke, um, for your time and for coming and, you know, chatting with us a little bit about yourself and about your collection. I'm excited for you and, um, you know, looking forward to seeing more from you and from your collection. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me and uh, hopefully we'll see each other real soon. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you.